Hi guys, today it's my pleasure to welcome Kyle Dale back to the channel. He's the head of the Oasis Collectors Group and Bittersweet Home, a top new British memorabilia company with a focus on Oasis and British indie bands. Later this year, Kyle is going to be putting on a world-class exhibition at the Salford Lads Club in Manchester. He'll be showing a wide range of super rare and unique Oasis Collectors pieces, and if you would be interested in winning two VIP package tickets to the event, this is your chance. Each VIP ticket includes entry, plus a personalised, signed and dedicated drum skin and sticks from Oasis drummer Tony McCarroll, and a few other extra collectible surprises to be revealed on the day itself. To enter, go to the website bittersweethome.co.uk and join the newsletter mailing list, and where it says name, Put your name, followed by the initials of this channel, JHG, right after your surname. The winner will be announced in around four weeks' time, so the very best of luck to all of you. And now, let's get to the interview. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome back to the channel for, I think, the second time, Kyle Dale, head of the Oasis Collectors Group. How are you, sir? Uh, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Yeah, good to see you. Good to have you back. So, amongst other things, you've come on today to share a few of your pretty fascinating new discoveries, a new Oasis storage find. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about that? A sneaky, sneaky video appeared on, on online of a chap opening a lot of storage boxes. No words, no introduction, just opening storage boxes and flicking through them. Obviously, there'd been some sort of deal in the background and people were clambering to see what was going on. I think for me, similar to yourself, I'm all about the audio. You know, finding unheard tracks or unheard versions of tracks and whatnot. And I could see, I mean, what I what a lot of people class as trash, what I class as gold, just being flung around CDs and that tapes and thinking, stop throwing them around, you know, that, that, could, that could be history, that. I messaged the fella and said, listen, please stop throwing them things around. <laughs> and if you're selling them, I'd love to be involved. And actually, it turned out to be a really nice fella, really nice guy. He was getting bombarded with messages. Like just, just set this just chucked around, but it's like, you know, that's Oasis Teenage Cancer Trust 07. You know, just, just, just set lists and... Oasis gigs going back to, you know, the 90s. Flight cases, flight cases full of stuff that have been around the world. It was huge. And I think it will be um, the last we'll ever see of anything like that again. It was fascinating. So I was quite lucky to get down there first, for well, one of the first couple, I'd say one of the first five people to go down and see it. And I, and I walked away with exactly what I wanted to walk away with, the audio. It's 100% legit. Everything's absolutely come from the right. I mean, you can picture match it. You know, I've got, I've, my, I've, one of the flight cases I've got was the orange case that Noel's orange amp was in. So they're, they're not things that could be um, faked, let's say. I mean, some of the stuff that's come through, I've just put it away. I don't know where I've put it now. One of Liam's um, mic cables, you know, just just little things like that, that it's just like chucking it over and it says Mr. Gallagher on the on the, on the the cable. Little things like that, that when you find a lockup like that, full of amps and cabs, they seem small. When I, in reality, that's not small. Liam's, you know, Liam's gig used and studio used uh, cables uh, great you know Noel's suitcase from the early days his personal suitcase with his handwritten tag on it all his old gig passes you know his stickies on the inside of it that was a special one to find there was lyrics handwritten lyrics loads and that's a big contention subject actually handwritten lyrics I've just bitten the bullet and bought my first few sets of them because there's so many forgeries out there it's such an unsafe market that so unless you absolutely trust the source, and it's a direct source, I've never bothered with them before. I managed to pick myself a couple of up, but this this story like I've had loads and loads. Uh, written by, you know, Noel, Gam, Andy, various songs from various eras. There was an, un an unheard song in there, which I've been told I can't, um, lyrics to an unheard song. I can't say the name of it, you have to not to say the name of it to anybody, but, but that was quite interesting to see. So are you able to show us any of your finds from the uh, Oasis storage lockup? I think straight with the audio stuff, there was... Five that tapes, and these um, are going to the studio tomorrow to get converted and just see what's on them all, really. But I mean, I, I got all of the that tapes a few years back, and there was five unheard songs on them. Five, um, two of them were done in a sound check, and then uh, G Max ninety seven, and they were very very raw. Well, three of them are professionally recorded in the studio, and and they're great. I tried to get them back in those hands just before the Be Here Now anniversary reissue. I thought they would be great as, as extra tracks, you know, as like uh, bonus tracks. But I never heard back. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to try one more time to get them back to because I just think 
Listen, listen, you know the way the collecting world works. I've been offered a lot of money for these tapes in the past. And you, you do get the people on forums saying, just put them online. But I don't want to just put them online. I think they should have an actual release. You know, it should be an official stamp. Plus, it's not my place to put them online. Plus, I don't know if I get in trouble for that. It's not my place to put them online. It's the person who wrote them's place to decide what to do with them. Just to clarify there, so you have three completely properly recorded, unheard, be here now era Oasis songs. Yeah, three acoustic songs sung by Nolan Studio, recorded by with him, with Owen mixing it all. There's another little fact for it. When I, when I last saw Bonehead at a signing session, and he says, go on, play them to me then. And Bonehead had not heard two of them. Two of them were unheard to Bonehead as well. And one of them turned in to go let it out. And he said that that's the top that tape that's on here. So I'm really, I really want to get this converted from this, um, from this studio, from this storage lockup, and just see if it's a release version or if it's an early demo of it. Because the bridge of one of these acoustic songs, the song's nothing like go let it out. But the bridge is is the same melody as the Princes and Kings section of Go Let It Out. The other two are totally, totally different and nothing like anything. I did a couple of events at Rockfield Studios with Nick Bryan over the last uh, couple of years. But I played them through the Rockfield Studios speaker system, these three unheard songs. And it was funny to watch 40 or 50 grown men just mesmerised for nine and a half minutes at these three songs. I don't want to don't want to sit and hold things and keep them away. You know, that's just not what it's about. I think it's... Get it out there. But yeah, on the same note, I'm not going to get myself in trouble. So it's, uh, I'll do it right. But if they do watch this, if if uh, anyone at, at Big Brother or Ignition or, or, or Noel, whoever watches your channel, get in contact. Have them back. Have them back. Is there anything else new and exciting that's come to light in your collection with particularly what you were saying there, the audio? <laughs> There's no indication of one of her stuff on the DAT tapes. Uh, but saying that, I said that about them ones as well. It was the B-side uh, recording session for all, uh, for all Around the World. So uh, Street Fighting Man uh, was on there, sung by Noel, which is on YouTube. You know, that's, that's on there now. But I, I saw some of these uh, some of these cases, and you'll, you'll understand why I got excited with some of them. Uh, ignition, head shrinker there, but that's just kind of your standard stuff. Uh, Stop the clock. Well, this one here, the roller. So this was this would have been done early days. 13 acoustic tunes in 06. Uh, the Prodigy, Guns Rough Mix. It, it, I mean, it's... Oh, the fucking the bushes intro, you know, the one that's got the post encounter start. That, that was quite an interesting listen because that was on YouTube already, but it's uh, different orders of the albums. I put a few on the channel, the ones that, I didn't, you know, that are just totally safe. There's some very early demos of the BDI tunes sung by Liam. Obviously, in the past, we've had the early demos of BDI tunes release, but again, I'm singing them. As part of your work with the Oasis Collectors Group, you've obviously you've been in touch with a lot of famous people and you've got some fantastic connections. And I know that you are particularly close with Mr. Owen Morris. How is the big man doing? Yeah, he's great, yeah. That's great. I think he's a fan of yours, actually. Yeah, he's great. He's, um, he's over in Costa Rica, isn't he? So he's, uh, he's living the life now. I spoke to him two weeks back, I think, two weeks ago. He's on his own good form. I think he's back in the UK soon, so I'm going to meet him for a pint. I'll, I'll probably catch up. There's still a massive Owen Morris-shaped hole in the uh, British music industry. We need him back. Of course there is. Of course there is, absolutely. Everything changed when, when the old guard didn't get the contracts renewed. If you ask anybody what the favourite albums are, it's always one of the first four, isn't it? Always. So it's uh, you should let him remaster the albums, do something like that. That would be pretty cool. And, and, and a total new project. Yeah. You know what I would love? I would love for the, uh, the Naughties Oasis catalogue to get mixed and mastered by Owen. How cool would that be? Exactly. Exactly. Imagine that. That'll be that'll be something that'll be uh, special. Definitely. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, with your work with the Oasis Collectors Group, you have met and collaborated with so many rock stars now. So, so tell us if you don't mind, if you're allowed, who have you met? Thirteen different people related to Oasis now. I've met and done signing sessions with, and you know, half the time it's to charity, half the time it's you know for other reasons. I'm a big supporter of Teenage Cancer Trust, and you know, we met Zach Stark six months back or so. And he donated his whole fee to, to TCT. All the band members, really. All the band members, Blah, 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 Liam and Noel. That's kind of where we are. I mean, Gwigs, I've met Gwigs three times, but he's not someone that would look at doing a science session. You know, it's, he's a very private guy, as he's quite out there. But as a fan, it's just something that you can't imagine, you know, because I was in my teenage years when it all kicked off. And if I would say to me back then, with my little bubble coat on and my bowl haircut, at this time, it's, uh, this amount of time you'll be, you'll be, you know, you'll have met these people, sat down with them, had a beer, and have them call you their friend on Instagram stuff. That, that, that to me is just mind blowing. Well, I mean, since you set up the uh, the OCG uh, from the outside, at least, it looks like it's just grown and grown and grown, and 
as I understand it, you now have like a, a larger company, like an umbrella company that covers all your memorabilia stuff going forward. Can you tell us a bit about Bittersweet Home? I'm still in this old room here today, but I think since we last spoke, I've I've moved up a bit. I've got, I've got the website now, bittersweethome.co.uk, and that's now my company, I guess. That's the, that's the, that's the brand. So all the events that I used to do, the signing sessions and the, the store is now officially on a website, and... Um, and it's doing, it's doing very well. It's been three weeks. It's been active, I think, two, three weeks. That big flag there, well, I'd love to say it was made for you, but that's going to be hanging at a box at Knowles TCT gig. I want to get the best advertising out of that one, for sure. So I worked in finance. I had a career. For me to leave that and start following this passion, you need to see a need. So Any business needs a supply and demand. And I think what was missing in the UK is a trusted company that could do signing sessions with artists that we know and love. And uh, it's big in America, you know what I mean? It's a big deal over there. You don't do it so much in the UK. So it took a while to get going. It's a nightmare to buy memorabilia, it is a, especially in the UK. The amount of people that have joined OCG and said, oh, my, this is my pride and place. This is a beautiful... And it's stock shit. You know I mean? it's, and you don't want to say, oh, God, that's your pride piece. And it's, you've been ripped off. So I think it's been good to build a brand that's trusted. With, with the science sessions that we've done there, and more so the expertise that's on board that will tell you if something's real or not and be able to check background history. Check with the artists. That's gold bust. This, this is handwritten lyrics by so-and-so, Andy Bell or Gale or whatever. Text them. Is that you? Yeah, that's me, yeah. Gold. You know what I mean, you can't get that anywhere else. It's not a brag. It's a service and it's really, it's, it's done really, really well. The whole th- thing with it is it's a store where you can buy it with absolute, absolute confidence that everything is totally legit. If it's not been gained by me, it's been gained by a select, maybe five people. That I know certificates of authenticity. They're pretty much useless these days, unless they've got a picture of the actual item. Anyone can type one up. People live by these things, but well, they're worth really, unless they've got a picture of the actual item being signed, like ours do. They're not worth much. It's interesting as well, some of the amazing stuff that you have been able to accumulate. I mean, you were mentioning you've got some some gold discs, you've got some other cool stuff in the background there, I think. What, what, what have we got on the bed there? So not just having an item, things like the maracas here, you know, you can buy these, but to have them um, um, gig pictured from the gig they were at, and then also the actual set list from the gig itself, it makes it into a more of a piece then. On this guitar we've been working on here, this is, um, I mean, this is beautiful. I need to clean up a little bit now for it to go to sale, but it's Andy Bell's wrote lyrics to turn up the sun around the outside here for us. And then we've got Johnny Marr there and Bonehead. So it's kind of like a trio of godlike guitarists uh, piece. Um, just to make it a bit, a bit, a bit unusual, uh, Liam's actual tambourine from from Ten Years of Noise in the uh, London show, with a stage use set list there, and you got an unused ticket VIP bus signed by three members, and the itinerary. You can buy these on eBay now for thirteen quid. People sell them as genuine. Having the history with these items is what what kind of sets everything apart. And as a Man City fan, this was a project I could not wait to get started. So this was. Um, the biggest challenge of this was getting Bonehead to sign it. That was the biggest challenge with that one. Yeah, that was a good piece. It's signed by Noel, Liam and Quiggs back then. A lot of the signature styles have changed over the years. So Noel and Liam have had about 14 different styles. Um, Bonehead, Tony, uh, Quiggs, White, they've all stayed the same. So this piece came to me with these three guys on it. And I was able to add Bonehead and that. And it still looks, it still looks of the era and of its time because obviously their signatures have not changed. We work on Vox boxes, getting them all, you know, signed up. And the Vox box in itself is a rare piece. There's one going on the website, um, a brand new one, um, going on the website this week. It's signed three times. I got this on eBay recently, which was a very unusual. I'm not into clothes at all. No, I just don't. It's not my scene. But this one was a bit different because it was um, a Nebworth 96 catering T-shirt. But what was interesting about it, it was a lovely sound. It was uh, signed on the back by the whole band and by Keith from a. Uh, Prodigy, so that was a that was a a weird find, but the seller um, decided to bleach it to try and get the get it back white again. That was a good move. It's a bit of an art gallery coming down here now. We've got the uh, MTV uh, sign print there uh, to, to to my kids. Um, but going down here, this was an old. This was one of the Sharon Latham uh, prints that was done a few years back, signed by Noel, limited to fifty. Over the years, I've got the rest of the band members on there as well. This is an interesting one. This was a coffee coaster that Liam wrote his full name on. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Nebworth poster prints there. I pushed them two together and got them signed across the two, which I thought was a bit unusual. 
This is one of the old um, Oasis uh, Pretty Proofs, um, which was signed by the band over the years. I've had a few extra on there. This has become one of my favourite items. So obviously I wasn't involved in a, the making of the album, but um, you can get these if you've you know, promoted the brand or whatever, like a record shop. But obviously I've got Noel to sign it there. So Kyle, tell us about your recent acquisition of a 1992, I think, Oasis demo tape. The thing is with this, right, it's out there already. It's out there already, but this is the actual, this is the item. There's only been, there's only been like three or four of these. Uh, this is the actual demo tape from back in the day. Well, the chap that I got this off, he worked at a social club, an Irish social club in Levenshire in Manchester back then. And Oasis, even pre Noel, were there for a brief time before they got booted out for reasons that come up in the interview. He's a great guy, Liam, and he's uh, he's got a, he's got a lot of stories. So yeah, he did us a bit of a tour. It's a wedding venue night. The chap let us walk in and walk around the place. He was saying, well, "That's where the stage was." And that's so it's a really interesting video. All that stuff you've just shown us there—that's amazing. Um, I understand there's an exhibition coming up. It's not just me. There's, there's a few people, three or four people involved as well. But they specialise in certain items, like you know, Noel's old guitars and drum kits and whatnot. And with it being the definitely, definitely maybe anniversary this year. And Liam's playing, obviously, this tour in June, mid-June. They're doing a um, Salford Last Club in Manchester. There's going to be a three-day exhibition on there. So there'll be certain opportunities to get personal signed items to you from band members, a couple of Q&As, presentations. I'm really excited about it. It's costing me a bloody fortune. So fortunately, it's not going to be free like Chasing the Sun was. Uh, but it's only going to be 50 or something like that. So it'd be good. It'd be good. The History of Oasis Tour Through Items and Images. That's not the name, but that's kind of what it is. Really that sounds goes. great. That sounds brilliant. Yeah, actually, yeah. I might have to go. Of course, you're going to go. There's going to be a VIP launch party. I want you to come there dressed in nothing but a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see that, mate. You don't want to see that. So soon, Noel is doing the Teenage Cancer Trust again. And yeah. in a similar vein, I understand that a bit of Sweet Home has also started supporting some uh, worthy causes. With the OCG over the last couple of years, every three months or so, I think we raised like 10 grand in a, in a year just for just random little bits and pieces here and there. This is Kyle here from Bittersweet Home with OCG with Zach Starkey. All right. Yeah, we've just been, uh, we're absolutely fucking knackered. We've just been to a gig last night and we've done a whole day signing session in aid of Teenage Cancer Trust. Good so, cause. Zach's been very, very busy, so hand. Yeah, I'm fucking knackered <laughs> It was, Zach, it was actually Zach that kick-started it, Zach Starkey, because he, when he donated, donated his whole fee to them, I thought, that's that's a good idea, that's a, that's a good way of doing it. 100% of the proceeds go to charity, 100%. Uh, an artist called Paul Fellows had done two prints, and he's got Noel's whole band, all the High Flying Birds have all signed it. They're both up there. Andy Bell has done some signed lyric prints for Turn Up The Sun. There's a couple of things from Alan White, drum skin, some drumsticks. These, these are items that are in the store, and if they are bought, or when they're bought, a few of them are gone already, that goes to the pot as well. Yeah, um, I mean, that's cool. So you can you can do your bit for charity and get your hands on some genuine, legitimate signed merch as well. Carl, you've mentioned before about forgeries and fake memorabilia that's kind of yeah. flooded the market, particularly in the case of Oasis. Um, mm. I think you've got an example to show us. The lyrics are a nightmare. No handwritten lyrics are a nightmare. Signed items. I would say Oasis is the second most fake band uh, after the Beatles. But uh, we've got this uh, this MTV wall up here. I bought this. I've always wanted one of these. They, I've always wanted these and the popcorn. You know the popcorn awards, the old uh, VMA ones. I wanted one for years, and then I bought this through a memorabilia dealer. It was very well thought of, and then it arrived, and it just didn't feel right. So I spoke to a company in America um, who make the awards. They actually make these awards for, for MTV. There's similar companies in the UK that do them for the Brits and whatnot. So so once it arrived, um, they just didn't feel right. And it cost me 1,500 quid. It wasn't cheap. They, they didn't want it back. The sellers just said, just keep it. Please don't ever sell it on again. But it, it, you know it'll become now? It'll become a toilet roll holder in the new, in the new office. That's what it'll be. That's the most elaborate toilet roll holder that anyone will ever see. The only people that will ever have a go at you for doing this sort of research and pointing these things out are people that are little dodgy monkeys or they've got something to hide. Well, I suppose from the outside, as someone who's not a particular memorabilia collector myself, it just seems obvious that if you're exposing illegitimate dealers or if you're the ones selling the legitimate stuff, the mm. illegitimate dealers are going to hate it and are going to slag you off. I mean, if you're going into a marketplace with a lot of corruption, you're going to mm. end up falling out with the criminals a bit. 
Yeah, definitely. And, and it's not always that they're, they're intentionally bad, you know, because people buy these things and don't realise what it is. And it just goes round in a circle. Like the, the, the handwritten lyrics keeps coming up. The final message with it all would be just triple check everything, ask for stories. Even, even the stuff that I've got here, that, that tambourine over there for 10 years of noise and confusion. The guy I got it off, got it off the guy that caught it. So it's a full story, pictures. The maracas, um, the, the, the girl who caught them, had a video of them being given to her by Liam. These little things, get them, get them, because they stay in a folder, they stay that it's proof, and it's not, it's, it, it's gold dust. As soon as something moves hands a few times, that story's lost, and then it, it's, it's nothing now, it's nothing. Well, mate, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, me and the band are going to be up in Edinburgh soon, so maybe I'll catch you there for a pint. Uh, keep me posted. Definitely. And as always, I hope we talk again soon. See you soon. I'll see you at the event as well. Fantastic. All right, dude, that'll do. Brilliant.